Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. A few announcements. Uh, choir practice Tuesdays at 6. Wednesday morning, coffee cup at 10. It's a lot of fun. We just sit and chat and have some snacks. Please come. Stories and popsicles with Pastor Melody Thursdays at 10 a.m. in Houston. Bible study here Thursdays at 6 p.m. And then the youth group, they had that yesterday. Collecting change to help pay the connection old portion. We're collecting until the end of the year. And we still have the cutlery, the magnets, the cookbooks, and any donations from the building fund. Um, on Thursday, this Thursday, the 21st, I'm going to clean the cabinets and the uh, pantry. Uh, there's a lot of stuff down there that is so outdated. I swear it's older than I am. <laughs> I'm what, sweetie? There's syrup on there. You guys are working in but a lot of it, some of it's 10 years old, the date, some of it's 12 years old, maybe even older. But if you have the time and you feel you can help me, I'm going to get rid of it. I mean, there is some vegetable spray down there that is dated 2010. But I'm going to get rid of it all. It's just ridiculous. And I'm going to wash out the cabinets and if we can get to the pantry, which is really the culprit, we're going to do it. I would appreciate the help. The more help, um, the faster we can get done. So that would be this Thursday at 10 o'clock. Okay. And then one more thing. If you're interested in going to a Wild Thing game, um, you have to let Johnny know. Um, uh, the two dates are August the 5th and August the 19th. Those are the Friday games and those are the firework games. I apologize. I'm not to apologize. Right? Yeah. Those are the only uh, two fireworks <coughs> games, okay? But you have to let Johnny know by J July the 24th. And we are not going way up to heaven this year. We're going to go over in his section, and it's down lower. Okay? And you said the sun is behind you. It doesn't get it. Yeah, at that point. So um, the two days would be, and you have to let him know what day you'd really like to go, August the 5th or August the 19th. But he has to know. Next, probably next week, so he can get the tickets. Okay? Thank you. Anybody else? Karen, there's a worship committee meeting here on Tuesday. Um, let's go say 5 15 because that's what time I can get here. So, anybody else? Okay. <laughs>
4031. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then as a first reading. <laughs>
you ever make a call message? Are they hard to keep sometimes? They're hard to keep sometimes. Even adults make promises, but they can't always keep up sometimes. But do you know who keeps promises to us all the time? God. God. You read my paper. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what God promises us? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven things he promises us. No? Okay. So he promises to love us forever. No matter what, he loves us forever. He promises never to leave us. He's with us all the time. He promises to comfort us. When we're having a really hard day or a really hard week, God's there to comfort us and make us feel better. He promises to help us. If we ever have really hard decisions to make, God will help us. He'll, make, he'll show us which is the right way to go. He is always faithful, which means he's always with us, always for us, and will never change. He promises to keep you safe. He gives you people in your life to help you keep, keep you safe. And God is always there to watch out for you. And he promises to always keep these promises. Is that a good thing? We're pretty, we're pretty lucky, aren't we? Okay, let us say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for these promises. Thank you for always being with us. And thank you for our two beautiful girls and our big girls and boys too. Amen.
you'll be better every day. Um, we didn't I'm doing in the announcement, but after church, when we normally have our coffee and cake, we're still having coffee and cake, and it looks like chips, and I don't know what else back there, M&Ms. <laughs> Because we're going to have a, a mini shower for Tiffany and Red Ryan. So you're all welcome to stay. Please stay. Because it was a big cake back there. Ruthie, you got anything Well, Elaine and Deborah have both been sick. I, I really haven't talked to them the last couple of days, but then I get stuff. Does anybody talk to Pastor Melody? No, I was talking to Elaine. Um, they're just kind of laying low and just stuck down here right now. Like getting along better. Yeah. Okay. They're on the men. Okay, thank you. Um just talked to Melody on Wednesday. Wednesday. Jim had tested positive for COVID. She still had not. She was still negative, but she was not feeling well. And so she asked that we take over the service today. Um and let her have time to get better. So now whether she's tested positive for the COVID or not, I don't know. Haven't heard from her. Uh, we're planning on Bible study on Thursday. And if, if she can't, if isn't well or can't, we'll let everybody know. Any other? Denver? No, I just had a couple of days here yesterday. You know, they kind of broke our hearts for not knowing a lot of stuff that <laughs> we didn't know who John Wayne was. Oh my God. Or who? They mixed up Tom Cruise and Tom Hanks. I didn't know who Jim Cash was a rapper. I didn't know who John Travolta was. Yeah. Johnny Cash is a rapper. Now they really old. Now they know how we don't. Anything else? Gary, your brother. Yeah, Robert. Delessio family. So today we're mine passed away. Robert Delessio. Oh yes. They go to Houston. Yeah, they go to Houston. Yeah. How about your brother? Is he still in prayer? So so. today on this kind of dreary day, but we've got lots of joys, lots of things to be happy about, and we thank you for all of the joys that have been mentioned, for Forrest finally finding his way and, and, and being happy about his job and moved into his new home. We're excited about Hunter and Camelia's engagement. Um, we're really excited that Tammy Small Peril has been is going off the hospice and has been doing better and being able to move being able to do more for herself. Um, Father Karen is thankful for all the cards and calls and prayers that she received while she was sick. I, I swear if we could, we'd wrap her, in, wrap her in bubble wrap, but I don't think we can do that. Be with her and her family as they go on their cruise to Ireland, Ireland leaving this Tuesday. Let them have a good time, but keep them safe. And thank you for our youth group. Father, they bring joy to our hearts. Um, we're lucky to have a group of kids like we have. And Father, we also have prayer concerns. Um, we ask that you be with Aunt B as she waits for her transplant. Be with Sage, bring healing to him. Um, be with all, everybody who's suffering from COVID, Father, Elaine and Dave and, and Jim and possibly Melody. Um, such a tough thing and, and it lingers on for so long sometimes in some people. So be with all of those who are, who are trying to deal with it. We ask that you be with Gary's brother Rich as he goes up and down. Um, be with Vic and Amy and Ruth. You know exactly what they need and we ask that you would provide it to them. Um, be with the girl's dad, father, as he um, 
us to deal with this um, pacemaker issue um, and, and make him do continue to do what he is supposed to do and not do what he's not supposed to do. Father, we ask that you be with the Robert Alessio family as Robert has passed away and the family needs to feel your loving arms around them. And Father, we ask now that you be with us as we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We turn in your hymn books to page 707, the hymn of promise. <coughs>
you looked at and who the author was that tells you how many times promises are mentioned in the Bible. One of them was 7,000, one of them was 9,000, one of them was as high as 44,000. I didn't have time to go all the way through the Bible and look at all of these, but I think it's safe to say that an average is probably between eight and 10,000 times that it talks about promises. But we see promises everywhere. You look into advertising, we see the airlines advertise, we promise you this, we promise you that. You get to the airport and wonder where that promise went. We look at pricing. They'll tell you, uh, we have the cheapest prices, go here. We have, we promise you, or give us your price that you find and we'll match it. Do they always? I don't know, because I never tried. Um, but we hear of a lot of different ones, and sometimes we believe them, sometimes maybe we don't, I don't know. Um, but when we look through the song and scriptures today of God's promising, we found so many of them, but the seven that Jess talked about, I think bears repeating. He will love us forever. He will never leave us. He will comfort us. He will keep us safe. He will always be faithful and he will keep his promises. We're gonna explore some of the words in the Bible regarding these promises. The Apostle Paul wrote about God's promises to Abraham. This is found in the first book in the Bible, in Genesis. He tells, he, the Bible has promised to supply our needs. He, the Bible says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Bible does not say he will provide us with riches. It doesn't say, it only says that he will provide our needs, not what we think we need. So we can't be saying that we want a Rolls Royce or whatever. We might be driving a station wagon. They probably don't know what a station wagon is. We have those kids. <laughs> but he will provide us these needs include food, clothing, and shelter, and salvation <coughs> through Jesus Christ. God has promised his grace is sufficient for us and has made provisions for our salvation by his grace through faith. God has promised his children will not be overtaken with temptation. God has promised us victory over death. In a couple of weeks, I don't know that we know this or if everybody knows this or not, but in a couple of weeks, we're gonna be celebrating Christmas in July once again. We did it a few years back. We're gonna be doing it again. And if you think about Christmas and Advent leading up to Christmas, there are four Sundays in Advent and then Christmas Eve. We light candles. These candles on each Sunday in Advent is also a promise. The first one, Sunday, is the promise of hope. We light the candle of hope. The second Sunday is the candle of peace, and so we light the candle of peace. The third Sunday is the promise of joy, so we light the candle of joy. The fourth Sunday is the promise of love, and we light the candle of love. And then on Christmas Eve, we light what we call the Christ candle, but it's also the candle of promise of, of God's, of, a promise of arrival. God's promise that he is sending his son joy to the world. You can't think of promises without thinking of the rainbow, I don't think. The choir's intro this morning was titled, entitled Precious Promises. And I pulled it out last night and sprung it on him this morning because after I got to thinking what it was all about, I didn't like the intro that we had chosen. So this, if you couldn't understand the words, the first line says, every time I see a rainbow, I'm reminded that I have a friend and he won't forget his promises. And that is one thing that I have always thought about whenever I've seen a rainbow, there's something so beautiful about a rainbow, and especially if it's a double rainbow. And you can't see a beginning and you can't see an end. And in Genesis 9, verse 13 through 16, God tells Noah, I have placed my rainbow in the clouds as a sign of my promise until the end of time to you and all the earth. 
When I send clouds over the earth, the rainbow will be seen in the clouds, and I will remember my promise to you and to every being that never again will the floods come and destroy all life. For I will see the rainbow in the cloud and rem remember my eternal promise to every living being on the earth. We are reminded by the rainbow that God loves us. The red, when we see the red, we always think of blood. So we can relate the rainbow colors to our life and what, what the biblical terms would maybe mean. The red being the blood of Jesus who died for us. Blue reminds us that God's word is true and to trust his word. Yellow is always a happy color. So happy brings joy. So yellow could be thought of as the joy, the strength, the Lord shall give and be your strength. Let me tell you that again below the reading. Yellow means happiness and joy. And so in the Bible, we could say that the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. It's in there. The colors of the rainbow together are peace and harmony. We can think of green as the earth. Some places that, that would think of green as money as well. I don't choose to think of it that way because when you're seeing a rainbow, you think of fun things. Fun things would be green as, as when we bring into spring and summer and we see everything green and pretty. So all the colors of the rainbow together would mean peace and harmony. There's more colors in the rainbow. There are seven, I believe. And the rainbow encourages us not to give up on God. When we see a rainbow, God is encouraging us to be faithful to his promises and to our promises. God has promised that all things work together for the good to those who love and serve him faithfully. God has promised that those who believe in Jesus and are baptized for the forgiveness of sins will be saved. One of our greatest promises that we can remember always is God has promised us life eternal. <coughs> so if we live by all of these things and think on all of these promises and live as Jesus wants us to do, we can think of and thank God for all of the promises he gave us and try as we might. We know that we make promises and sometimes we cannot deliver. You've probably made them to your kids. Maybe your parents made them to you. There are many reasons why we probably cannot keep them. Sometimes you, you just never know life interferes. But when we think of a promise, we hopefully that we can keep all of those promises or not make them at all. When we come into the church, when you baptize, when you come into the church to um, join the church, there are many things, we call them covenants. Covenants and promises to me are the same things. I don't know if they really are or not. I didn't look them up in the dictionary. But well, we say these words, and sometimes these words become repetition to us. So if we remember all of God's promises, those seven ones are, I think, the most important that Jess, that Jess told the kids, and they're the simplified versions. He will love us forever. He will never leave us. He will comfort us. He will keep us faith. He is always faithful and he will keep his promises. Thanks be to God.
can't be more civic. Oh, you can sit. Somebody told me once, though, that the choir should never sit, but they hate that. They should never what? Sit. You know, when we tell, when we tell the congregation they should sit, that's why the choir should stand. I don't remember where I'm at. But they, they wouldn't like that. So they do it.
Fredericktown, our organist was actually Catholic, but she was the organist for the Methodist Church. And we liked singing that song in Fredericktown. And she, uh, when she was practicing up in the church, she was playing that song, kind of singing it to her, you know. The, and the priest heard it, and he loved it. And he wanted to know what the words were. And he introduced it to their church, and they sang it. They yeah. loved that song. Yeah. Good. I've been, I've been in a Catholic church. They have some good songs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody thinks they do. But this they is did. one that, that has a story for us. Step. 2218. 22, 18. That's in the black book. Yes. I have to be difficult. You don't want to lose my page. 2218. I love these books, these in the green. And we've had them for way longer than I, I can think of. They're still new and they're really not. This one's, we can do the first and the last. Take the first ending and then do the last ending. Okay.
to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Amen.